This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Face Attorney Investigations 2 Prosecutor's Path. If the audio sounds a little bit different this episode, it's because we're recording in a different location. Yeah. Also, Marty, do you remember what happened last time? Uh, and where we last, are? Last last time? The, um, the last time we played this. How long ago was that? Was that it was like only a few, few weeks ago? It was only a few weeks ago? Probably not. Grand oh, turnabout, yeah, we're still in the beginning part two. This is the longest Out of to five. be continued. No, there's only two parts. They just didn't want to break it up. Can you believe we're still in the beginning of this case? Mm, no, because... But it, it gets what, what real are, good. I was about to say, what are they going to do? Is it going to be like, oh, psych, we kidnapped John, and we kidnapped Maya. Okay, so I'll just say, the beginning of this case is kind of slow. This is where the case starts to get really good. Okay. All right, it's April 6th, 216 uh, p.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Look who it is. Mmm, beardy. Well, 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 if it isn't former prosecutor Edgeworth. Blaze to best. Witness, face forward! We're not done talking yet. Like I said, you see, why exactly would I have needed to help that person out, Your Honor? So, I mentioned, um, missing sprites from the game. He clearly burned his beard and his hair last, yesterday. He got another fake one! <laughs> That's true, it was a fake beard, but still, his hair should have been gone. And how did he get a fake beard if he got immediately arrested? My one phone call, I'm <laughs> gonna call the toupee store, see if they can give me another fake beard. You know how <laughs> men are when they get older and they're like, I don't want to have no I hair. I can't call Sebastian, he's tied up right now. <laughs> get it, <laughs> funny <laughs> joke. <laughs> Anyhow, you know, it's a crying shame. Having a beautiful woman declared guilty. Honestly, it brings tears to my eyes. I was against getting Dolly off, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, there is no reason for me to go out of my way to hide evidence just to save her. However, we still have the testimony of your son, Prosecutor DeBest. He testified that he handed the evidence over to you. Hmm. Well, I haven't the slightest clue what he was talking about. I simply can't imagine why Sebastian would have said something like that, you know. Um, I like how we're actually in court now. What if there is evidence that shows your connection with Warden Roland? Hmm? And just what do you think you're doing, former Prosecutor Edgeworth? I was under the impression that you were no longer in any position to stand in court. Miles Edgeworth, how dare you barge into my prosecutor's bench! Franziska, I'm sorry. I need you to lend me the bench for a little while. I'm sorry for spitting on your arm. That's fine. Because I think I did. <laughs> what are you saying? Judge Courtney, I've brought vital evidence related to this case. Your Honor, please allow me to testify. Ha ha ha! She'd never allow it. Objection. Courtney Pye, Uncle Ray also asks that he be allowed to testify. There are no objections from the prosecution either, right? Understood. The prosecution also has no objections. Objection. Well, I do! <laughs> There's no way you can allow something like this, you know. Such high-handed methods. Don't you mean underhanded? <laughs> Surely are enough to warrant being held in contempt of court. Wouldn't you say, Courtney? Ugh. As long as John is still in danger. Judge Courtney cannot rule against the warden. I must convey to her somehow that the search for her son is progressing. Judge Courtney, I ask that you have faith in me and my assistant. Now that you mention it, where exactly is she? She is currently out searching for the most important piece of evidence. Objection. It's a waste of time! There's no such evidence! Are you stalling for time? How disgraceful! We ask that you put out your lighter in court. I don't think that's allowed. <laughs> Can't smoke anywhere these days. <laughs> Most if, you need, if you need to smoke, go outside with the dogs. <laughs> Most important piece of evidence, huh? Courtney Pye? I don't really know what that evidence is, but I think we should have faith in her. After all, even if she may not look like it, she's still the great thief Yada Garasu. Somehow, it seems that Mr. Shields understands. Judge Courtney, we've already determined the general location of that evidence. It's only a matter of time before she steals the evidence back. 
that took way too long for her to pick up. I understand. Then I shall give you special permission to testify. Thank you, Your Honor. This is ridiculous! It is ridiculous. <laughs> Not quite as ridiculous, though, as the time that the judge was in the bathroom at the urinal and he could oh, see something you... happening. <laughs> I forgot about that. I did. That <laughs> they put the, the window to the bathroom right above the urinal, <laughs> no. which you absolutely do not, not do. do. <laughs> Maybe that Japan was the is weird. weirdest. No, that does not happen in Japan, I don't think. <laughs> this vital evidence that you have found, please present it to the court. Blaze DeBest and Patricia Rowland are somehow connected. Allow me to present the evidence that proves it. He which tied piece up of, his son. <laughs> which piece of evidence shows the relationship between Patricia Rowland and Blaze DeBest? Well, last time we found uh, the report on, on Nightly, Nightly. Yeah, that was it. in the conductor's safe written by Warden Rowland. This document contains a detailed report regarding the interrogation of a certain man. A certain man? That man being the late Horace Knightley. And the one who interrogated him was the defendant in this trial, Patricia Rowland. So that means there was the interrogation where... That's right, Patricia Rowland murdered Knightley in the aftermath of the interrogation. And that very interrogation has been recorded in this written report. That definitely sounds like vital evidence. Miles Edgeworth, just now you referred to the document as a written report. Now just who in the world was that report written for? I thought you might ask that, Francisca. And that's precisely what is most important about this report. We found this document inside the safe in the storeroom on the 51st floor of the Grand Tower. That's private property. <laughs> The 51st floor. The storeroom for the black market auction! Indeed. And the conductor of the auction was you, Blaze de Best. He's like, I don't remember that. You received a report about the victim from Warden Roland. In the face of this evidence, can you still say you have no connection to this case? In regards to that, I refuse to answer. So, yeah. What? It is yet to be proven in court that I was the conductor of the black market auction. Oh, have you already forgotten the events of this morning? I believe I had already proved it back then, did I not? Were we in court, though? I will not deny that I was bested by you. However, that was at the crime scene. Who knows if the results will be the same in court. An acquittal is still possible, you see. That's the sad thing is, like, you can tell he's so smart. And yet, just so evil. He's he, he is definitely one of the most evil characters in the series, I would say. Really? I mean, yeah. he did tie up his own son. That's kind of evil. And we, we might not have even still explored all of the things he's done. Mm -hmm. Until it's been proven in court that I am the conductor for the black market auctions. You can't prove that document was addressed to me. Your logic is twisted. <laughs> That's not very nice, you know. My logic isn't twisted, is it, Courtney? Don't you feel the same way? It was quite unlike you to allow former Prosecutor Edgeworth's statement just now, you know. It saddens me, you see, that you would fail to uphold the law as a judge should. In fact, I'm so upset by this, I may have no other choice but to use my last resort, you know. I thought he was going to pull out a phone. My... What? I was gonna say, my headcan is that every time he lights the papers on fire, he's burning evidence. <laughs> oh, that, that would be funny. It, it is as you say. Something that has not been proven in court does not merit any deliberation. I will have to overrule Mr. Edgeworth's claim. Ugh, as I thought, until John has been rescued. You see, the truth at the scene and the truth in the courtroom are two very different things. I'm realizing the more and more I go about this series, the more and more Courtney sounds like, um, Professor Umbridge. Him, him. Him, him. <laughs> Hang on. If, is the volume too quiet for you? I'll turn it up a smidge. Cool. So you're saying the truth can be distorted in court as long as it's for your sake? What a horrible thing to say! I'm not distorting the truth or anything like that, you know. If a not guilty verdict is handed down, then that becomes the truth. That's all it is, you see. It's useless. 
There's nothing we can do unless the missing evidence turns up. Now then, Courtney, why don't you deliver a not guilty verdict and let's get this over with? Jeez. After all, that evidence isn't gonna show up anytime soon, you know. Hey! Thank you. Who raised an objection just now? Why, it's uh, the kid from Nino Kuni, of course. I mean, Blaze de uh, <laughs> Best Sebastian. Son. P Pops! Sebastian? <laughs> Why did you come back here now of all times? Sebastian, what is the meaning of this? Just where were you and what have you been doing since you abandoned your own trial? I I'm sorry, I was, um... Such an act is unbecoming of a prosecutor. You should be ashamed. I, uh, well... Sebastian, you still don't get it, you know. This court is no place for a sniveling child such as yourself. Pops, I... I... I want to see him with a different sprite. Uh, I've come to present any new evidence, Your Honor. And he gets an epic new theme song. <laughs> so, so please, please let me take my place back at the prosecutor's bench. Sebastian, I didn't think he would come back. Ha 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 ha! What's all this now, Sebastian? You don't seem at all like your normal self. Uh, Pops. Hmm? Come now, what's the matter? You want Daddy to play with you? Is that it? Well then, why don't we just head on back home? No. Return to the witness stand! What's wrong? You're shaking like a leaf. Your Honor, the prosecutor officially in charge of this case has just arrived with new evidence. The trial is still in session. In light of this, shouldn't we continue with the proceedings? <laughs> Naturally, the defense has no objections, Your Honor. I'm sure the defense attorney originally in charge would say the same. The prosecution has no objections either, Your Honor. Courtney, stop shaking. You're gonna be fine. Continue with the proceedings? That won't be necessary. Isn't that right, Courtney? Blaze still believes that he was the one who kidnapped John. As long as John still hasn't been found, Judge Courtney will remain bound by Blaze, and nothing else will change that. Poor girl, jeez. Did she just fall over or something? Th that sound is... Her cell phone. Hmm? My phone as well. Eh? Uncle Ray's phone is also... <laughs> Everybody's they phone. won. They won the crunch cereal contest. Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Shields. Got him. We found John, sir. We rescued John. Excellent work, detective. That kid was the most important piece of evidence, rat. Way to go, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to spread the word quickly, so I had everyone call. Oh, I love this CG. <laughs> John looks so mad. He's, He's like, just oh like, man. Do I have to go back. I got oh. saved by a 16 year old girl. <laughs> Judge Courtney, it's for you. Didn't she hear anything? Yes, I see. I'm. I'm so glad you're safe. Make sure you properly thank everyone, okay? Be careful and come home safe. He's guilty, 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 guilty. <laughs> Let us resume the proceedings. And this is the time you're really glad to hear her theme song. Now that I may once again swing my gavel to my heart's content. Ha! <laughs> you're kidding, right? This is just a sad joke, you know. Witness, this is no joke. Please return to the stand. Prosecutor DeBest as well. Promptly return to your seat at the prosecutor's bench. 
So the prosecutor's bench has three people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Your Honor. It's a little bit crowded, guys. Just a little bit. Ugh. I, I brought pork rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Normally it's the defense bench that has all the people. <laughs> the prosecutors do it by themselves. Now it's the other way around. Also, why is the prosecutors on this side as opposed to the other? They're always on this side. It's just because the perspective is flipped normally. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like when you when the court opens, it's like rah, 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 rah. the prosecutors the... are always on the left. Oh, it's okay. just because because you're seeing it from the perspective of the defense, it appears on the left when we're actually the defense attorney. Uh... Instead of facing the judge straight forward, you're facing the witness stand straight forward. Sebastian de Best. <laughs> yes, Miss Von Karma. I leave the rest to you. Huh? Going up against your own father, it won't be easy. I shall observe how things pan out from the gallery. Yeah, she she knows about going against your own father. Ooh, yeah. I, I love Francesca's character development. I love it too! <laughs> I just wish she didn't physically abuse people at the same time. Mm, she had a horrible father. Who knows where her that, mom that, is that, in the No, picture. no, that, that explains her actions, doesn't excuse them. Oh, it's true. <laughs> I'm not saying it excuses them. All I can picture for her mom... Do you remember that gal from... I can't remember what show it is that... Oh no! You haven't seen that, have you? There's a weird lady in Gravity Falls that I'm thinking of that... Makes me think of what the... Is it, um... It's uh, Gideon's mom. Oh, I know. Yeah, you haven't seen it. I was about to say, is it... Just keep what's her, Mandy's mom? What's her... Mandy? The, the, the bratty girl, who's like... Pacifica? Yeah. It's just, you know... Mandy? <laughs> that's, they, they both have, like, rat names. Kind of. <laughs> Mabel's rival, yeah. Pacifica. Mabel's rival, Pacifica. Like, Pacific I, Northwest. I, that's, that's, a, that's a bratty name. Mandy's kind of a bratty name, too. Sorry no. for anyone out there who's named no, Mandy who is perfectly like, polite. No, it's like Priscilla and Penelope from Angel Yeah, Yeah, yeah. It's because I've en encountered certain medias where those characters with those names are really Mandy? big brats. Yes, and they're, they're a bratty Mandy. I've never there. heard of Mandy as a name. Billy and Mandy, she's a pretty big brat. <laughs> I can't think of what that show is that's right the, now. That's one of the two kids who live with the Grim Reaper on Cartoon Network. And the Grim Reaper has a Jamaican what? accent, which is like actually fits in perfectly. It was a weird I was kind say, of that disturbing seems kind show. Kind of a, like a very strange kid show. It, it was. It was barely even a kid show. It was now disturbing. then, allow me to ask once more: Is the prosecution ready, Prosecutor DeVest? What is this new evidence you wish to present? The missing knife and chisel, Your Honor. You mean they've finally been found? He's on it. Prosecutor de Best, is this true? The, the knife and chisel? I, I wasn't able to find them. I searched and searched. I really did, but it was already too late. Too late? I feel like he should say, by the way, uh, the, the witness locked me up in... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I have two people who witnessed this. What do you mean? I remembered... This morning, when I passed by Pops in the garage at home. Why was Pops in the garage at home? Because that was their house. Why was Pops at home? Because it was the their jail. house. No, no, he got arrested this morning. This remember, this takes place right after Case Four, so God, that got resolved. This, this is a day. Yeah, he was holding something wrapped in a newspaper. Pops, where are you going? Ah, Sebastian, just taking out some trash. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Oh, you thought he was gonna about to kidnap him? No, no, I was. I'm thinking of the the scene from Monsters Inc. with the the tr trash can. It's oh, a oh, cube of garbage. garbage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at, at that moment, I heard it, the faint sound of a bell. Could that sound have been, by any chance, the bell attached to Dogen's chisel? In other words, you're saying that the witness threw away the evidence. He's like, I don't know. I searched for it, but I didn't make it in time. I'm sorry. Where exactly did you search for it? The garbage, the garbage dump. I went to the garbage dump and searched everywhere. Oh. This poor kid. I thought the evidence pops through away had to be there. Hmm? Isn't that Sebastian? Uh, what are you doing here? Whoa! He ignored us. So, at that time, he had gone to the garbage dump. But, but, this was all I could find! This is, it smells rather peculiar. Well, you, well of course it's, it's smelly if you got it out of a trash, trash can. Yeah. 
Now that you mention it, there's kind of a funky smell coming from you as well. What do you expect? I was digging through garbage! <laughs> now there's this old beef song. And what of the knife? I think it's buried somewhere in that giant mountain of trash. But I couldn't find it by myself. I understand. I shall accept this into evidence. <laughs> well done, Sebastian. You never betray my expectations, you know. You search so desperately for the garbage and that's all you have to show for it. Ah! Oh, what a tearjerker. I'm tearing up already. <laughs> it's a bit too early for tears, don't you think? We haven't examined the evidence properly yet. I think it's just a pointless waste of time, you know. I'm counting on you, Sebastian, Miles. Show him that the truth can be exposed in court and take him down. Mr. Shields is backing us up. Now all we need is a breakthrough. Prosecutor DeBest, let's take a closer look at the evidence. R uh, right, uh, how do we do that? Allow me to introduce you to the DS uh, system. Oh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's the garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage. 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 Let's have a look inside. It'd be great if we could find some kind of proof. This is the bell that was attached to Dogen's chisel. Are there any traces left behind on it? Back! It's no good! There's not even a single smudge on it! Your gloves. What did you find, Persecuted de Best? Did you even find anything? It's just it's just a Taco Bell wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it! Of course you'd find nothing. Something like that can't be called evidence, you know. All it is, is trash. It may be sad, but that's the truth, you see. Maybe there's something in the bell. Were Sebastian's efforts all for naught? No. Indeed, this bell does not seem to be valid evidence. However... Mr. Edgeworth, are you really giving up? Calm as always, Edgeworth. Quite unlike Sebastian here. Well then, is the prosecution finished with its argument? Objection. Justine, not yet! We're not through yet! There's still something we haven't examined! You're still not giving up? Struggling in vain's not cute at all, you know. <laughs> Wipe away the spit that I put on the screen. <laughs> Bless the bath! <laughs> yeah, you spit on me! Sorry. It seems Sebastian hasn't given up yet either. I was just thinking the exact same thing. The last item remaining. Is it trash or is it evidence? Is it trash or is it treasure? If we don't examine it, we'll never find out. The item I'm thinking of is the knife, the bell, or the newspaper. Why? Okay, obviously there's no knife, so that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Bell, don't really know. The newspaper, if it's dated for this morning, might be beneficial, maybe. Mm -hmm. That okay. might be good. We're still not done examining the newspaper that the bell was wrapped in. It seems that Sebastian has the same idea as I do. Was that what I was- what Yep, it, that's what it is. Okay. Wow, this is just wonderful, you know. So wonderful it's to cry for. Yeah, Blaze the Best, you should've used last week's issue of uh, the Lego magazine. <laughs> or to... wrapped it in Arby's <laughs> wrappers. <laughs> <laughs> Who eats Arby's for breakfast? I love those the beef and cheddars. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> is it desperation or simply reckless abandon? Are you really going to- Pin all your hopes on a worthless scrap of newspaper. Yep. Ha! <laughs> we won't know for sure whether or not it's worthless until we examine it, now will we? Sebastian, let's examine it post haste. It's paper. Uh, the paper. Is this a handprint? Oh. There's something greasy on here too. Is it oil? Judge Courtney, we'd like to request a fingerprint analysis on this paper. I was thinking looking for the time. Could you please I summon think... someone from forensics? Oh, well, the forensics department will be coming real quick. Your request is accepted. Contact the lab at once. Oh boy, we get to examine fingerprints. Oh. Uh, reporting, these are definitely fingerprints. Uh, however, it's from a glove. What? 
Didn't I tell you? It's nothing but a worthless scrap of paper. Didn't we steal his gloves? We did. <laughs> okay, good. Just think about it, you know, when handling important evidence. What kind of idiot wouldn't use gloves? Oh, wait. Wouldn't that be you, the idiot who doesn't even know when to give up? That's pretty harsh, talking to your own son like that. Also, on court, where you're claiming you're not guilty. Yeah. He's like, he's putting up a pretty big fuss for supposedly not being guilty. Yeah. What's wrong with calling an idiot an idiot? It's your son, even if your son's a dumbbell. If you want to be the best, you have to be heartless. You're his son, not his professor. Oh, no, he gave his heart to the darkness. <laughs> I have no compassion for worthless individuals, not even my own son. Pops! I... You know, you've always called yourself a genius prosecutor, haven't you? Didn't I explain to you this morning why you were a genius up until now? That's right. It was all because of me. Because of my authority. You were always being protected by people like Courtney and me. Um... Now get that stinking face of yours out of my sight! Stinking? You know, now that I think about it, that stench might just suit you perfectly. Just keep it away from my nose or my eyes will start watering. Oh, too late, I guess. Wrong! You're wrong, Pops. Sebastian, what are you talking about? You're the one who stinks, Pops! It's you, not me! What? <laughs> you haven't noticed, have you? You smell, Pops. You didn't add deodorant this morning. <laughs> I was in jail! <laughs> oh wait, that was beforehand. You didn't put on deodorant, you forgot to shave, and, and uh, you smell like Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> that would smell better. So much that you can't even hide it. Mr. Edgeworth, try smelling the handprint on the newspaper. The smell? Hmm, it smells like oil. He forgot to shower. I know something that smells just like it. Come to think of it, back then. It smells like motor oil. Maintaining that motorcycle must be Blaze's hobby. That's right. The smell proves it. It proves that the culprit who hid the evidence was... It's no good. I guess I can't become the best after all. Hmm? I'm too soft. I could never be so heartless. Bro. I just... I just can't bring down my father with my own hands. Prosecutor the best. I'll do it for you. Summon your courage. Become a different prosecutor from your father. Wasn't that what you decided? I like how his hair becomes an exclamation yeah. point so much. We are prosecutors, and as prosecutors, we stand in the courtroom. In that case, isn't it our duty to shed light on the truth? Exposing crimes and bringing criminals to justice, even if the criminal is your own father. That is your duty as a prosecutor. Didn't I promise you? That if you have the courage to stand up, I will show you the way. And if you cannot do it alone, then we shall do it together. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Allow me to present the evidence that connects this handprint with my father. It's gonna be the gloves, gonna be the gloves. Oh, I, I wish he had a take that sound. This is the smell of motor oil, the kind used for maintaining motorcycles. Both myself and Mr. Edgeworth has smelled the exact same smell before. I can see how this game definitely used the most, like... Assets. Assets and pushed the DS to the limit. Yeah. Because they have two characters objecting on the same screen. They have, like, people's beards burning off. Yeah. They've got, like, so much happening. Blaze the best, it was in your garage. And wouldn't you say these fingerprints have a rather peculiar shape? The five letters that spell out D-E-A-T-H, it's exactly the same as your own gloves. Should've used the other glove that you spelled D-A-T-H. <laughs> you can buy gloves like that from anywhere. It doesn't prove a thing. I haven't seen death gloves at Kohl's recently. I would, I would buy death gloves at Kohl's if they were there, in fact. Use the Kohl's cash. Yeah. Is that really the case? 
That's not the only thing that these two pieces of evidence have in common. The fingerprints on the newspaper that was used to wrap up the bell. And Blaze's mechanics gloves. This is the unmistakable similarity that they both share. Um, I mean, I would argue either the, um, the letters or the oil. What about the letters? Well, the letters are also present on the newspaper. The, yeah, but he's basically like, you can buy death gloves oh, anywhere. Oh, well, then it's, it's definitely the oil that's on the newspaper as well, right? So this? Yeah, I would think, I would think so. This is the unmistakable similarity that these two pieces of evidence share. Hmm. I'm not quite sure where this unmistakable similarity is, you know. Hmm. Even if you don't understand, I do. But Mr. Edgeworth, I don't understand either. You don't understand anything. Nah! So that wasn't it. Um... He's gotten a lot more competent, though. Mr. Edgeworth, let's look closely at the fingerprints on the newspaper again. There's one fingerprint that's got oil on it. Which one? The H. That's dirt. Okay. It should definitely have a similarity with the glove. Hmm. As I thought, that glove isn't evidence after all. Is that really the case? That's not the only similarity. Oh, there isn't dirt on the H. That's weird. Look carefully. Is it the... Is it the fact that there's the... Um... Things curving inward with the... So, like, there's the red spot and there's the black. Where are you po point to it on the screen? There? Or is no. it the white things? Nope. We already examined those. Um... Look at the letters. D, E... Oh, the... Oh, the A is broken. The A is faded, The yeah. A is faded. That, I didn't notice that. My bad. If you examine the imprint left by the letter A, you'll see it's unmistakably from this glove. Anybody could have worn it. What? And that's not all. There is one more item that we must take note of, namely these dirt stains. I suggest we do a comparative analysis of the dirt stains from the newspaper and the glove. If the contents match up, then it will prove to be decisive evidence. Bailiff, please have these dirt samples sent to the forensics for analysis immediately. Gah! Edgeworth! Sebastian! You lowly prosecutors! Do you have any idea who I am? Yeah, a guy who's going to jail. Pops, you can't run away anymore. It's been proven in court that you concealed the evidence. And that you tried to cover for the defendant. Y you're saying that I'm... guilty? That I'll be sent to prison? Me, Blaze to best? A couple of snot-nosed punks are gonna make me disappear? There must be some mistake. Be a man and admit to your crimes. Do you really think you can survive if I'm not around? I... I'll be fine now. I thought I wanted to become the best prosecutor, so I could get your approval, Pops. But when I was kidnapped by your men, and stuck in that dark room, I started thinking, I am truly powerless. I despaired and averted my eyes from the truth, but... At that moment, Mr. Edgeworth stepped in and showed me the way. And now, I'm no longer just a child chasing after his father's approval. I've become capable. I can find evidence all on my own now. What? My men kidnapped you? Why were you? Pops, I'll show you the truth you never knew for this trial. Sebastian! How dare you speak to me like that? Your men are stupid. You should have just stayed as an idiot, son. No, you're rising beyond. You may have hated me till the very end, Pops. But I... I've always looked up to you. Thank you for everything up until now. And goodbye. You. Since when did you? All you've ever been able to do is depend on me. SEBASTIAN! I can't believe he actually thanked him, though. It has been established that the evidence was concealed by Blaze de Best himself. That, that, that's seriously one of my favorite moments of the case, is Sebastian becoming capable and, like, 
getting rid of his own dad. Also, man, man, we 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 hated him the first couple. Places. I know best character development. You go from hating Sebastian to being like, I feel so bad for that guy, and to be like, Yes, Sebastian, yes, get the, it. the power, the glory. <laughs> yeah, basically, Blaze is a villain so vile he got two breakdowns. <laughs> nice. A judgment regarding his concealment of evidence shall be delivered at a separate trial. <coughs> Sorry, I've been. <laughs> Feeling gross from all the kidnapping. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh boy! The missing chisel and knife still have yet to be found. However, once a search of the waste disposal site is underway, they will surely be discovered. Yeah, maybe you'll find Arthur there too, <laughs> looking for his. Well, what was Arthur doing in the dump anyway? That one episode. Uh, getting a wheel for his chariot. That's right. <laughs> the the knife will be found. What will happen to me if it's found? <laughs> No need to worry. You'll simply receive the punishment you deserve for your crime. Ugh, punishment? For me? Blaze, what in the world were you doing? You... You? After all your boasting about being able to create your own truths and not guilty verdicts? That's why I contacted you immediately after the prison incident in the first place! I'm starting to sound like, um... Who's the uh, poodles galore? Poodles galore? <laughs> not really, you know. <laughs> That's what it sounds like in my head, at least. <laughs> to make matters worse, you even kidnapped the wrong kid. I can't believe this. You really, really, really are completely useless! Honestly, Blaze is just as stupid as his son. Like, literally. <laughs> like, like father, like son. Where, like, he's like, I'm gonna dispose of evidence. I'm gonna use the one pair of gloves that could incriminate me. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, I'm like, gonna verbally abuse my own son in front of everyone. Why does everyone hate me all of a sudden? <laughs> I don't understand it. I'm just being the best. <laughs> <laughs> that was certainly a violent outburst. But you heard her, Prosecutor De Best. Yeah, she got flustered and said a bunch of important stuff. Right. Indeed. That's correct. He still doesn't seem very sure of himself. Well, give the kid a break. He's... He, he got he through... Was from, this has been a day. He's like he's like Kevin on Reddit. Like, he got through school for sure happenstance, and he probably should only be in, like, fourth grade. And now he's graduating. And also, it's more like, okay, DeBest has his, has his time with Courtney. He thinks he's awesome. Then overnight, it's like, oh, what? My, my dad's going to prison? What? He gets kidnapped thrown in the in yeah. the closet. No, not even overnight. Again, he, this all happened this morning. Like, this morning we resolved the crime. Sebastian ran off. As soon as he ran out of the building, two guys are, do you know Courtney? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could have him. And then... This, this, yeah, this is... A, yeah, this this is whole insane. trial is one day this and it's crazy. Insane. Very well. And with that, this court is adjourned. <sighs> what? Huh? That sounded bad. Who are you? Only one person is a voice clip for Not So Fast. Can you get out of here, Lang Z? <laughs> Judge Courtney, it's still too early for a happy ending. Lang Z says the end of the trial is not always the end of the case. Uh, the Miss Rowland's outfit looks like a, a beehive. Yeah. <laughs> and who might you be? I'm Pajama Sam! Oh, wait, wrong game. The name's Shilon Lane. I'm just a humble, lone investigator. Do you have some objection with this trial? Ha! Not a chance. The defendant there has a heart as black as a moonless night. Hey, don't tell me you're the one from 12 years ago. You got it. Ain't this nice. Now you're finally going to prison where you belong. 12 years is a long time coming from a suspended sentence. Don't you agree? Agent Lane, what are you talking about? The SS5 incident from 12 years ago. It's a case I'll never forget. 12 years ago? Little K, little K? Well, a lot has changed. It all happened over 12 years ago. Back then, he and my father were close friends, and our clan protected the president's life. But then, he suddenly changed. It's as if he became an entirely different person. Nowadays, he doesn't even have a shred of faith in the police force of Zane Fa. Twelve years ago. I wonder what went on then. Twelve years ago, Kay was like eight? No, twelve years ago, Kay was like four. Ooh. Might it have something to do with Lane's father and President Juan? Patricia Rowland! 
And you blazed best. Back then, the two of you killed off the Lane Clan. <laughs> Were you involved in the incident 12 years ago? That's right, I was. However, I'm not here to chase after the ghosts of the past. I'm here for you, Justine Courtney. Me? You and one other. Oh, was I voicing him? I forget. <laughs> I think I was. John! Miss Courtney, you're coming along too. As a suspect in the murder of the president of Zhang Fa, oh, yeah. Di I, Jun Huan. I kind of forgot that was happening. I was like, the case is almost over, right? No, no. That was the president. we're still at that the was... beginning. We still have the yeah. middle and the end. Ugh, look at his face. Agent Lane, what evidence do you... Settle down, Mr. Prosecutor. The investigation has only just begun. We're going to inspect the crime scene with the suspects in attendance. Agent Lane... Did he get his hands on some new pieces of evidence? Please, please, please let the actual murderer be, um, Penny. <laughs> please. That would be a great twist. Penny, Penny, like, takes up karate and she just kills the president with her bare hand. No, wait, with the Muzilla. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have any objections, then you can tag along as well. I shall do just that. Can we, like, wrap up this case, though, real quick? Please. I want Patricia Rowland out of the picture. The end of the trial is not always the end of the case. There are still many mysteries yet unsolved surrounding the murder of the president. Uh-huh. Namely, the true nature of the giant monster and... Then come and get me. I'll be looking forward to it. That is, if you can bring me to justice. But I highly doubt that. The true identity of the person on the other end of the phone. To be continued. Bit At last, bit after bit like five bit hours bit of gameplay. Yeah, this is where the case starts getting real good, I would say, because it focuses less on like, oh, we're just basically continuing the fourth case and more on like, oh, we're actually fine, gonna investigate the president's death. I kind of forgot the president died. <laughs> That's okay. I'll be it's common for butts to die. Yeah, apparently. And he, the president's a bit of a butt. He, at least he died with his super epic suit on. So <laughs> That's true. He died with his muscle suit, so no one knows how, fat, knows he how fat he is. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next time. It looks like we'll be get, uh, going back to the crime scene and learning more about the president's death. That'll be fun. Look uh -huh. forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.